things uh, set up here for our program today. Um, we'll get going as soon as we can. Um, but a few comments uh, to start off. Uh, again, there's a lot of people to thank for this. Uh, we, we set up uh, quite a while ago to decide when we were going to do it, and I think it's appropriate. Um, we're doing it during October, which is Pastor Appreciation Month. So um, it, it worked for the family uh, to have it today, and organizing the music, which I know Pastor Kendall loves. So um, thank you to the Grace Lutheran staff. You guys did a lot of work uh, for this Sunday, and I appreciate it. Uh, the lay ministry board for all their planning. Uh, I know uh, Diane, Sharon, and Maggie did a lot of work um, with details um, and reminding me of things, so I appreciate that. Uh, Providence Valley for allowing us to have a joint worship. We appreciate the partnership we have with you. The fellowship board for the lunch uh, downstairs afterwards. Um, uh, to the extended family, thank you for coming. Uh, we appreciate that. We appreciate any time we can surprise Pastor Kendall. That's good, because um, he does that to us once in a while. Um, but I think um, most importantly, uh, also Jerry Potma for music during the program. But I think most importantly, um, you know, we're here for Pastor Kendall. But I think it's a huge appreciation we also have for Emily and, and the Stelter family, Zach, Noah, Hannah, Bethany, Brittany. Uh, there's a lot of times I see Pastor Kendall over here at all times of the day, all days of the week, weekends, whatever. So uh, it's really a, a partnership and a team, and, and I think we need to show the appreciation to the family as well. So. So in a short minute, we're going to have a video um, chronicling 25 years of Pastor Kendall here. Um, when I did a little bit more research, though, I, I was wondering where he found the Fountain of Youth because uh, I know his picture on the confirmation, I, I think the first year is 1998, um, but when I looked at him more, you've been here four decades. This is your fourth decade and your second century, so you've been here a long time. Um, but we appreciate all you do, uh, and uh, again, thank you to the staff here for this video. Um, excited to see see all that. So we're going to start with that.
Master Chocolatier. Again, thank you to the staff for that. Um, pretty much a slideshow of a legacy is, is the word that kept coming to my mind. So um, I thought you might wear your costume that you wore yesterday, but I, I guess not. So, um, so at this time, I'll, I'll call on, uh, for special music, uh, Jerry Potman. in Kendall. I have, I'm sorry, I have to start over. That was too, too low. What a friend we have in Kendall. He always has a listening ear. He is always there to help out and helps to calm our every fear. He is there to help us through things and cheers us on when things are good. He leads us to our loving Savior and shows us how to look for good. When we need some help or guidance, he will always take the time to lead us to Jesus, our Savior, whose love is right there every time. Thank you so much, Pastor Kendall, for sharing God's blessings with us. We are so blessed by your service and grateful your humor is a plus. Thank you. Next, uh, you know, he's uh, over the years many, many interns, so at this time I'd like uh, Sharon Vick to come up. Uh, Sharon has been the um, leader of our intern committee for many years, and so she has uh, a few notes to share and, and a couple surprises. Today we're excited to honor Pastor Kendall and Emily on their 25 plus years of ministry here at Grace Lutheran and Providence. Um, I've had the privilege of working with many of the interns and when I told them about this celebration, they were more than happy to share their thoughts about internship here. Their calls range from the state of Washington to Nevada, Colorado, North Dakota, Minnesota, and Wisconsin. Um, many of them shared how Pastor Kendall's taught them lifelong lessons. Um, one, not to underestimate the power of relationships. Two, humor and laughter are important. Three, pastors need to take care of themselves and their families. Here are some excerpts from what the interns wrote. This is from Dale Degner, who was our intern in 2007 and 8. I'm always amazed at how often situations and difficult days in ministry lead me back to my internship days at Grace and not to the classroom. Your internship ministry is valuable and don't think otherwise. I am so glad that I have been with you and Kendall and Emily. You are wonderful. Thank you. Thank you, Kendall and Emily, for all that you have done for us, your interns. You matter in a big way. Happy 25 years at Grace, and may your next years be blessed and filled with joy. This one is an excerpt from Ryan Jerome, who was our intern in 2014-15. The ministry of raising up leaders in the church is so needed today. It takes an incredibly gifted pastor to help the congregation see the significance of ministry that has been so central to what Grace Lutheran does. Future leaders need 
someone who exemplifies what it means to be a pastor, and Pastor Kendall has been that for me on my journey. You must really like Pastor Kendall because 25 years is a long time to put up with a pastor. All kidding aside, it's easy to see how such a kind and caring pastor like Pastor Kendall would be the perfect fit for an equally gracious and compassionate congregation. God's blessings to you and your ministry together. Know that the work you have done and continue to do is transforming the church and the world. I am grateful for you all, and I hope and pray that our paths cross again soon. This one is from Brooke Phelps, intern in 15 and 16. Pastor Kendall, your ministry is a blessing to all who get to experience it, and the mentor you have been to so many continues to show in our ministries as well. Your reputation extends beyond Dawson and beyond the Southwest Synod, and I know it extends to Eastern North Dakota Synod. Enjoy your celebration and congratulations on your many years of ministry. This next one is a complete letter, and you will see why. Dear Pastor Kendall, this note is from your first pastoral in intern, John Dahl. Remember me? You might not, as it's been 17 years ago, and if you're celebrating 25 years as Pastor of Grace, you are getting older, and the memory might be getting a little shorter. I had the pleasure of serving with you and at Grace from August 2006 to 2007. In that year, I gleaned the following. First off, I learned that I wanted to have as nice a head of hair as you did. Wow, did you have nice hair and still do. In all seriousness, chalk this first learning up to the importance of a sense of humor. Okay, moving on. I learned from you that each week meant different priorities and use of time. Some weeks there was more time for sermon preparation, other weeks much less. Some weeks there was more time for this, that, or the other thing. Other weeks there was much less time for this, that, or the other thing. You never dwelled on that in public with people, but rather no matter how, <clears throat> how much you had for your various tasks, you made it look like you had all the time in the world. I learned from you that ministry is about being relational. <clears throat> that truly it does not matter to people how much you know until they know how much you care. As a result, you are deeply loved by the people of grace and you have been able to awesomely share so much with them about the love and way of God. Finally, I heard from you that one needs to carve out time and space to love and be with your family and to make that and them always a priority. Because of this, you are deeply loved by Emily and all your kids. All told, your 25 years at Grace have brought forth overflowing and abundant fruit. Your cup overflows and I am deeply grateful for the portion that spilled my way. Thank you, wise mentor and friend, Kendall, from John. Okay, um, and now I have a surprise. We have two of our past interns with us. So the first one, we're going to ask Lori Wool to come up and share some thoughts about Kendall. And he's smiling because he knows this could be good. <laughs> probably has a right to be. <laughs> well, it certainly is good to see all of you again. It's good to be here again. Um, for those of you that don't know, I am Pastor Lori, and I was here in 2008 and most of 2009. I think I was here the longest of all of the interns because it took me so long to learn. <laughs> is that right, Kendall? So yes, today is an awesome day and we are grateful that all of you are here and we give thanks to Kendall and to his family for the many ways that they make such a positive, positive difference for so many people. So 
Well, the real reason I'm here is to share this story. So I have a Pastor Kendall story for you. Um, so the gist of this story is all true. It's all fact. Um, but I had to add some parts, you know, to make it a little bit more flowery, if you say. So, so I don't know if this is still going on or not. You'll have to tell me, Kendall. But back when I was an intern, which was a long time ago, there was a requirement for the interns and the supervisors. You had to go to meetings like three times a year. What were they called, Kendall? Did you say jesters? <laughs> they were called cluster meetings. So the interns and supervisors had to go to these meetings a few times a year, and they always seemed to be a far away, like at least two hours away that you had to go. So we'll just call them the jester cluster meetings, OK? Is that OK? OK, so this particular one that we had to go to was down at Shalom Hill Farm. If you've never been there, it's wonderful. It's down near Wyndham, and so we had to go there. And so we're driving along, and Kendall starts talking to me about their dogs. They had two at the time, and I confirmed this with Emily just on Friday, that they still have Abby, because Abby was one of them. She was young at the time. They had two dogs, and so he was telling me about their dogs. And they had an appointment the next day at the vet. So Kendall was going to be taking them to the vet, and he was a little concerned that they might be a little scared and you know, jittery going to the vet. Then he told me that he was going to be having several of his family members coming for the weekend. They were going to be coming to celebrate something at their home. And all of a sudden, when he's talking to me, whew, I start to notice this odor. I mean, it was getting worse and worse. It was quite pungent, you know? You know like when, when you drive by a skunk that really sprayed and it's really strong? So I thought, well, something happened outside, you know? We drove by, but it didn't leave. It stayed in the car, this smell. And I realized it was coming from inside the vehicle. And I couldn't help it. Tears started coming. I started to <coughs> cough a little bit. I grabbed a Kleenex from my purse, thinking that might help. And Kendall's looking at me kind of strangely. And he's thinking I'm sad about something. So of course, in his supervisory role, he's going to help out, right? So he starts talking, and he wants to help out, right? So he thinks, oh, I have to cheer her up. So Lori, ask me any question you want about ministry. So I quickly blurted out, what on earth did you have for supper last night? <laughs> And he looks at me kind of confused and he says, well, we grilled. We had hot dogs, we had some chips, and he said, and we had beans, and oh, he said, the beans were really good. I had two helpings. <laughs> so me being the great thinker and problem solver that I am, I responded with, ah, that explains the fragrance. <laughs> well. As usual, we were running a little bit late for our meeting, and Kendall, we hurry in, he hurries into the registration table, and the friendly person there at the table takes one look at him, and then she takes one look at me, and she says to Kendall, oh, aren't you sweet? You brought your grandma. <laughs> So the next, th <laughs> the next thing we had to do was we had to fill out name tags. Now these name tags were huge, like this size. And so we, she hands them to us, and she says, okay now, this is what you have to do with these name tags. You have to fill out your name, you have to fill, fill out where you're from, then the congregation that you're currently serving, how long you've been there, your family size, where you've gone to seminary, what you're planning on doing tomorrow. The friendly person then at the registration table explained why they needed all of this information. They were going to be using it for one of the sessions that day. <laughs> I was wondering if they were planning on creating autobiographies, because it'd be a great fundraiser. So anyway, Kendall slowly starts to fill out his name tag. And then the friendly person at the registration table looks at me and she realizes I'm not the grandma, 
but I'm actually the intern. And she says to me, ah, we have a slight problem. That was the last name tag that I had. So she searched and she searched around the room. She couldn't find another name tag for me, but she found a post-it note. <laughs> so she said, well, just write your name on it, you know, and that you're the intern. So I started to write my name on this little bitty piece of paper, and being the grateful person that I am, I stopped right then and there, and I thank God I have a short name. <laughs> After I wrote Lori on the post-it note, I realized, oh my gosh, this note is even too small for eight letters. So being the great problem solver that I am, I decided, well, I'll just drop a letter from my name. So. I did that, and beneath my name, I started to write intern, but the pen I was using was going dry, so I started to shake it, and I continued on. We had to hurry, I did the best that I could. But this is what my name tag ended up looking like, enlarged. <laughs> Lori Wold, old turd. So, in the middle of Kendall writing his autobiography, well, <laughs> the beans from the previous night's supper decided to make a move. <laughs> and he says to me, I have to run to the bathroom. <laughs> and Kendall, being a typical supervisor for interns, says, because he hadn't done most of his name tag, says, typical, here, you do it. Will you please, Lori, fill out the rest of mine? Oh, of course, I'm glad to help. Because I was the typical obedient intern. So I fill out the net rest of his name tag. So where it said family, I said, they are the best. Where it said, how long have you served your current congregation? I said, since the beginning of time. <laughs> When it asks something that you'll be doing tomorrow, I said, hosting a family gathering, then going to the vet with my two dogs, and buying a car freshener. <laughs> so Kendall comes out of the bathroom, and the first session had already begun. He hurriedly takes the name tag from me. He does not look on, at it at all. He just slaps it on. Now, most of the sessions are done separately. Supervisors in one area, interns in another. So I have no idea if anybody has read his name tag yet or if he even has read it. Well, the sessions go well, but they ran out of time. So they could not hold that session where they were going to use all that information on your name tag. So Kendall still did not know what was written on his name tag. So the meeting concludes and we head home. When we get just north of, north of Marshall, <laughs> Kendall tells me that there's a place that he needs to stop at in Green Valley. Remember that, Kendall? <laughs> he needs to pick up a few supplies for his family gathering. Do any of you know what that place might be? <laughs> the Catholic Church, he says. It was the beverage store. He needed to pick up some wine and some beer. Now, I'm not sure if that story about the family gathering was true at all, or if it was just for him dealing with the current intern on a daily basis. So anyway, I stay in the car and Kendall goes in. After a while, he comes out with a cart full. He unloads the cart into the car, he jumps in, and then we start the rest of the trek home. And he has this very confused and puzzled look on his face. He says to me, you know, the strangest thing just happened to me. I said, oh yeah, what's that? He said, one of the reasons I wanted to stop here in Green Valley is because no one would know me here. You know, it's just a tad bit uncomfortable for a pastor to buy, well, you know, a cart full of, you know, certain beverages. Then he continued to explain what happened. He got to the counter and the friendly clerk who he didn't know this clerk at all, said to him, Well, hi, Pastor Kendall. <laughs> How are things going at Grace in Dawson? Totally stunned, 
the first thing that came to Kendall's mind was, well, very good, we have a great intern this year. <laughs> then she said, well, I hope your family gathering goes well, and good luck at the vet tomorrow. <laughs> and then as he was leaving, she said, oh, and if you really need it right now, we do sell car fresheners. <laughs> Kendall said to me, I don't get it. How in the world did she know all of that about me? I truly looked at Kendall and I started to laugh so hard, the tears started to roll. I said, Kendall, look down at your shirt. He had forgotten to take his name tag off before he went into the beverage store. So Kendall, I have not told anybody at Grace that story before today but I have told a lot of my family members about that story, and we continue to laugh every time we tell this story. It's a great one. But truly, thank you for all that you do. You have made a huge difference in pastoral formation for many of us, and we are very grateful, so thank you. Our second intern is Pastor Lindsay Stolen Brennan, who was our intern in 2009 and 10, and now serves as a hospice chaplain in Wisconsin. Lindsay. Good morning. Good morning. I am rejoicing that the stars aligned that I could be here today. It feels so good to be here. So Sharon emailed all of the interns and encouraged us to be creative in our admiration, in, our, in honor of Pastor Kendall. And so when I was thinking back to my year of internship here at Grace, I remember baking a lot. I remember baking for staff meetings all the time. And so I decided to bake a letter to write a cookie gram. So if you'll flip that around, and I will, I'll read it out loud, I'll translate, because not all of you will speak fluent cookie. <laughs> Pastor Kendall, it's bananas to think that it's been 13 years since I arrived in Gnome Town, more specifically, to Grace Lutheran Church, a people that celebrate today 25 years of your ministry and leadership. My year here with you in small town Minnesota was the very best. You helped me to see ministry as ministry is, joy and sorrow, celebration and challenges. It's rewriting song lyrics for the stewardship drive. I think that was Gilligan's Island, yeah. <laughs> It's chasing down the bat that's flying around the Sunday school wing or finding it in a jar on your desk. It's supporting the community by substitute teaching when the school is in a pinch. It's laughter, which Anne Lamott calls carbonated holiness. I remember laughing a whole lot in my year here. I think that's a theme, the humor. It's walking alongside people in some of the best and some of the worst life moments. You walked alongside me and helped me discover ministry in new ways. Because let's be honest, this Wisconsin girl showed up with two years of seminary classes behind her, but all in all kind of clueless. In my time with you, Pastor Kendall, and the people of Grace, I learned so much in the midst of it all. And in the midst of it all was affirmed, challenged, and encouraged. Page two. I watched for only one year the ways you support and carry and love this community. One year out of 25. The number of hearts you have touched, people you have supported, and interns you have terrorized, wait, mentored, <laughs> continues to grow in ways that can't completely be counted. You've showed us how to glimpse God's kingdom on earth and how to share that love and light with those we encounter. I feel lucky to have been your colleague in ministry for that lovely year. 
A pizza, my heart, see what I did there? A pizza, my heart, will always call this place home with the gnomes. And that is fully because my experience as your intern was so wonderful. Thank you, Pastor Kendall. Heart, Lindsay. Thank you for that sweet message. And Pastor Kendall, you said that <clears throat> you didn't have a chance to read all the letters out there, so this folder has them all for you. Uh, at this time, the next item is um, a call Courtney Bergeson up for a presentation from the Sunday School and the kids. Hello, I'm Courtney Bergeson, um, director of our Christian Ed here, and as a little gift for Pastor Kendall from all of the Sunday School kids, we have this little tree. It's got a fingerprint of all the kids um, that we have here. And on the front it says, a pastor devoted to giving so much, God only knows all the souls that you've touched. Committed to serve when you answered God's call, you prove it by being a servant to all. So, yeah. All right, now, we have a special presentation, a, a, a skit, so I'm going to call on uh, Brad and Maggie Madsen at this time. Heaven has no brighter star than our next stellar guest, that omnipotent master, great seer, soothsayer, and sage from Pine Street, Mad Mac the Magnificent. I hold in my hand the envelopes. As any child can plainly see, these envelopes have been hermetically sealed. They've been kept in a pickle jar on Sharon Vick's porch since yesterday afternoon. <laughs> no one knows the contents of these envelopes but you. In your mystical and borderline divine way will ascertain the answers having never before heard the questions. You are correct. <clears throat> I present the first envelope. Praise the Lord and pass the ammunition. Praise the Lord and pass the ammunition. How does Kendall make coffee every morning for Emily? <laughs> Father-in-law. 
father-in-law. What do you call a priest who is also a licensed lawyer? This crowd does not have a prescription. <laughs> Boil the hell out of it. Boil the hell out of it. How do you make holy water? Mad Mac need complete silence. Oftentimes that's exactly what Mad Mac gets. Bible Belt. Bible Belt. What does Pastor Kendall use to hold his pants up? Kendall. Kendall. Who is Barbie doll's playmate? <laughs> Sis Boom Ba. Sis Boom Ba. What sound does a sheep make when it explodes? <laughs> Floodlights. Floodlights. What did Noah attach to the ark to find his way through the rain? <laughs> What's wrong with these people? <laughs> this crowd is tougher than a squirrel pot roast. <laughs> Sinbad. Sinbad. Summarize the Bible. <laughs> Gray hair. Gray hair. <laughs> what do you call a blackjack when it turns 60? What is the number of minutes the congregation hopes Pastor Kendall's sermon will last? <laughs> and in conclusion... And in conclusion... What is the phrase Pastor Kendall routinely uses at the end of a sermon to wake up the congregation? <laughs> Mad Mac, I hold in my hand the final envelope. <laughs> May a flock of pigeons roost on your gnome. Twenty-five plus years. Twenty-five plus years. How many more years does the congregation want Kendall and Emily to serve Grace Lutheran Church? Yay!
Thank you, uh, Brad and Maggie, for that. So, uh, there's just uh, one other item before the, we'll sing the final hymn. Um, I'd like to call on uh, Grace Lutheran President uh, Tim Borstad, who will present a gift to Pastor Kendall. Pastor Kendall and Emily, would you like to come up here? The congregations of Grace Lutheran Church and Providence Valley uh, wish to give you a token of their appreciation for all your 25 plus years at Grace Lutheran. Thank you very much. And I think we could give them another very, very big round of applause. Well, I'm, I'm humbled by uh, all of you and uh, um, the care that you show uh, myself and my family is overwhelming, so I thank you for that. Um, I can't believe it's been 25 years. You probably think that it seems longer than that, but uh, gosh, the, the time goes by so fast. Uh, looking at those uh, pictures, I, I used to be pretty good looking, but I don't know what happened to me over the years. Uh, but what a privilege and honor to serve with you in this little corner of God's world. Uh, this is a partnership. Um, you know, I have a family that makes me look good. Uh, I have staff um, uh, that I've worked uh, with through the years that have really made me look good. And so I'm so grateful, I'm so thankful um, for, for, for all of you, my family, the staff, all of you that have, we've partnered together, all of our interns that have also looked made me look really good as well. I think that's a big reason why I've uh, uh, had the privilege of re remaining here as long as I have, because we've had other voices that have been important for us to hear. And so all of our 17 interns that have served you in this place has been uh, just a, a joy and a delight to walk alongside. So. Um, I, I give you my uh, deepest thanks and to thank you uh, to Lay Ministry for all those, all of you that helped uh, put this program uh, together. Um, we, we, we just love you. Yep. Is this on? Um, I just wanted to say a few things. Um, a big thank you. This is overwhelming. But um, when we were interviewing, Kendall was interviewing for his call, we were moving from Missoula, Montana, um, and we came to Dawson, and um, Noah was just a baby, a month old, um, and Dan and Stacy Lee drove us around town and uh, to show us this great town. And I'm sitting in the back seat with Stacy, and, and Kendall was sitting with Dan, and I'm on everyone's lawn is junk. like beds and couches and garbage and all this stuff and I'm thinking well, this is quite a town I was I was thinking to myself there's no way we're moving here but um so when we do this big tour which took five minutes and um and we pull up in front of church and oh Dan says oh I forgot to tell you it's town cleanup day I'm like oh God, thank goodness but growing up I grew up um in San Francisco Bay Area so um moving here was quite a culture shock and when we were trying to make our decision people were sending us letters you guys were amazing you sent us letters someone sent us a copy of the sentinel which was after reading the san francisco chronicle just i'm telling you the the first page front page news was that a grain cart fell over on main street <laughs> and i remember saying to kendall what am i going to do in dawson churn butter i mean i didn't know what i was going to do but um i am so thankful for you um, my family, how you embraced us and um, supported us through all of life's big moments, um, birthdays, confirmations, births, weddings. Um, it's just been overwhelming, and I can't think of any other place I'd want to be for 25 years, so thank you very much. I believe.
believe we're going to finish with um, the hymn that Jerry had, and I think the words are going to be up here on the screen, I believe. So as soon as we get the go-ahead on that. that or Jerry might have to sing it again. At this time, we'll let the Stelter family go downstairs, take a couple pictures, and then we'll usher people out for refreshments downstairs. So thank you for all attending. Kids, thank you. That was, that was a long time sitting around, so I appreciate it, kids. Thank you. <laughs> 